Hi everyone, we're back on the topic of discussion. Of course, these videos, the new nurse over morning coffee might extend to more than just five. I may just drag them on for some more. There's a lot to talk about. This is called experience nurse versus new nurse. Here a nurse is sitting down for coffee, they're experienced nurses. This morning, three nurses are more, more experienced, are having coffee break, of course, and they're discussing making fun of new nurses. Please remember that every nurse started out from somewhere, everyone was new at some point. Could you just imagine one says that a nurse not knowing uh, when to use an insulin syringe and then the other chips in. What about the nurse who did not know what to look for when a patient is on heparin? And the other one goes, wow, well, I'll tell you, even when you are not a new nurse, it's very possible to do the wrong thing if you're not familiar with an area or familiar with medication or the policies and procedures of that unit. So nobody's ever excluded. Here we're going to talk to you about syringes and using the correct syringe. When insulin is ordered by the doctor, there is a very specific syringe that's used for insulin. It's not just any syringe. It's called an insulin syringe. And typically it's written on the syringe insulin only. Usually comes with an orange tip and um, you can see there I try to make it as close as possible to the real one. Here is a nurse who's about to administer medication saying, I have an order for 20 units of regular insulin. I think the small syringe should be good enough. That's not good enough. A small syringe does not mean that you have the correct syringe. What if you picked up a tuberculin syringe? What if you picked up a small syringe and it's not clearly marked the units of insulin on that syringe and you wind up giving three or four times the dose? So it's very important to pay attention and make sure that the insulin syringe is clearly marked insulin so that no mistakes because giving a patient too much insulin can be fatal. Now we're going to talk about heparin. Heparin is given to patients for conditions like DVT, atrial fibrillation, to prevent blood clots. And it's very important to know when giving heparin what to look for. In fact, it should be reflected, here is a helpful suggestion, it should be reflected in the plan of care, the potential for bleeding because of a patient being on heparin. Here is a new nurse with a patient on heparin. This patient has obviously been bleeding Nurse, why is my dressing covered in blood, says the patient, and the nurse's response, I'm not sure, let me report to my supervisor. Not good enough. A patient on an anticoagulant or anticoagulation therapy may have bleeding. This is one of the side effects of heparin because it's a blood thing. This may occur from the gums, urine, dressing sites, even from just, it just oozes from anywhere. Even sometimes if you look at the IV site, you will notice there's oozing around the IV site. And typically what happens is the patient on heparin assessment should be done of all these different sites to make sure there is no obvious bleeding. And if it should occur, we know about documentation, notifying the doctor. Sometimes they may select to check the PTT to make sure that it's within range to see if that patient is to be continued on heparin. So I hope if you have a patient on heparin or any other anticoagulant, you pay attention to small details that might be quite big in the end. I want to discuss with you a situation that I experienced several years ago in a recovery room. And it was not a new nurse. So at any point, nurses can always be, you know, at the other end. I mean, on, on being the unhappy ones. It does not always mean because you're a new nurse, you're always wrong. Or because you're an experienced nurse, you're always going to be right. This is a very busy PACU. It's also called the recovery room. And patients are usually brought to the recovery room to be stabilized. You know, they check vital signs, monitor their dressings, their pain levels. Doctors have specific orders written for every patient's situation when they're in the recovery room. And when stable, the doctor discharges them, writes the order that they discharge either home or to another area of the hospital. Well, on this particular occasion, this was an experienced nurse. She wasn't new to PACU. A patient was brought out from surgery and the doctor came towards her to give report and she said to the doctor, sorry, I'm going on my coffee break. Well, I hasten to add that was the longest coffee break she ever had. 
So do be careful when old nurses laugh at new nurses because none of us know when it's going to be our turn. So have a great day. I hope you've learned a lot from this. And as I close the book, I just wanted to ask you if you could search your hearts and ask yourself the question, when you are working with a new nurse as an older nurse, do you reach out to help to make the situation easier? Or do you feel just because you've turned the corner that you can make fun of that new nurse? It's very important to remember, none of us know when that situation is going to be ours. Have you helped your co-worker today is my question. Here's a new nurse on the left saying, help me, I'm drowning in work. And here's another on the other side saying, frazzled nurse. So it can happen. I wish you the best. Have a great day.